At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Welcome to Marketing Edge on TV, Nigeria's leading initiative in the business of brand management and in the management of brand business. It is a 30 minutes awesome package that comprises brand news, branding focus and industry conversation, all in a mix encompassing thorough and in-depth analysis aimed at promoting the brand idea. I am Olu Abu Kolaomoni. Stay tuned. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand idea. We begin Marketing Edge on TV with brand news, where we'll bring you the latest development around brands and on the field of marketing and advertising in Nigeria and around the world. Now on brand news. Against the backdrop of the eye level of quackery in the public relations profession and in line with the act establishing the institute, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, al Aji Muhammad Idris Malagi, will be inaugurating the Governing Council of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, NIPR. Dr. Ike Niliaku, the Institute's President and Chairman of Council, who disclosed this in Abuja, said the event is tagged Meet the President and that it will feature a special induction of new members into the Institute and conclude with a special dinner reception. The crying the eye level of quackery in the public relations president, Dr. Niliaku said the institute is open for those erroneously appointed to regularize their membership between now and the 31st of March 2024, before the 1st of April commencement of enforcement of the provisions of the act. The Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment has initiated collaborative efforts with major companies operating under the pioneer status of the National Sugar Master Plan. This step aims to address the escalating price of sugar and bolster local sugar production capacity in Nigeria. Dr. Doris Uzoka Anita, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, reviewed this development following a tour of various sugar companies. Anita emphasized that this move is geared towards ensuring price stability of sugar, particularly during the upcoming Ramadan period. At present, market surveys indicate that a 50 kilogram of sugar is selling between 60 to 62,000 naira with slight variations based on location. The Comptroller General of the Nigerian Customs Service, Bashir Adewali Adeni, MFR, has expressed readiness to partner with the African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat for enhanced trade facilitation in the African continent. The CGC stated this when he received members of the AFCFTA at the Customs Corporate Headquarters in Abuja. Lamenting the low trade volume in Africa, CGC Adeni said the NCS fully understands the importance of balancing trade facilitation and revenue while pointing out that Africa's share in the global trade is around 3 to 4 percent. He expressed concerns about how the African trade system refuses to grow beyond 14 to 15 percent, estimated over the last three to four years. He said they are not unmindful of the benefits that trades present in terms of economic growth, job creation, and poverty elevation because customs trade plays a role in fostering regional and international bonds. The customs boss described the guide trade initiative as important for the administration of countries, focusing on ways to grow their trade market, adding there is a need for collaboration in the verification of goods origin at the port. In a strategic move, Tukumba George Taylor, the former managing director of EU and Northern Nigeria, has acquired the entire business and assets of the agency to launch a new communications firm named Scots Communication. The acquisition was made through a business and asset transfer agreement with Hill and Noto Nigeria, a subsidiary of WPP's Can Group. 
the newly established Scotch Communications will function as a global strategic communications consultancy with a specific focus on sub-Saharan Africa. WPP Scan Group stated that this strategic move aligns with the company's objective to reallocate resources and enhance core business operations in primary markets. While commenting on the business acquisition, Zucumba said they are thrilled to embark on this exciting new journey, reaffirming the building upon the strong foundation laid by Hill and Norton. Scott Communication is committed to delivering the higher standards of public relations and communication services to their clients, with local and global insights to drive transformative growth. Tokumba was appointed as the first managing director of Hill and Norton Night Area in 2015, when it started operations in the country. That was brand news. Next is Branding Focus, right after the break. Your flight will be ready shortly now. Thank you. Breakfast in Paris. Hmm, lunch in London. This could be you. And there's more. Hey, Mai, tell them more. Of course. Now this is what I call a win. And this could be you too in the Globe Festival of Joy Promo. By recharging 50,000 Naira or more within a month, you could be among our 100 winners who will win business class tickets from Lagos to Paris to London. If you recharge 100,000 Naira or more in a month, you could be one of the many winners of a premium bungalow in Nigeria. The more you recharge, the more your chances to win. How was your flight? Delicious. Glow Unlimited. Marketing Edge on TV. Promoting the bright idea. Now on Branding Focus. In the dynamic realm of marketing, Nigerian brands are increasingly embracing a potent strategy, influencer marketing. This approach involves collaborating with individuals who have cultivated substantial and engaged followings on social media, proving remarkably effective in enhancing brand awareness, driving sales, and fostering trust among consumers. Given the expanding population of active social media users in Nigeria, projected at over 40 million by 2024, influencer marketing presents a distinctive opportunity to connect with targeted audiences and forge robust brand relationships. Leading entities ranging from household names like GT Bank and MTN to tech giants like Flutterwave are capitalizing on the influence of notable personalities across diverse platforms such as Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter to fulfill their marketing objectives. In the realm of influencer marketing, these individuals serve as advocates for brands, amplifying brand messages and crafting engaging content that resonates with their audience. This approach aids brands in reaching new users enhancing brand awareness and positioning themselves as authoritative figures in their respective industry. Influencer endorsement wields a potency that extends beyond mere awareness building. Through the endorsement of products and services based on their recommendations and positive experiences, influencers foster trust and motivate their audience to make purchases. In influential marketing, Individuals with established online presence and distinctive personalities can craft compelling content that directly engages target audience. This not only heightens brand awareness, but also cultivates a sense of community and trust between the brand and potential customers. Nigerian brands are increasingly realizing the significance of teaming up with influencers who embody authenticity and cultural relevance. This ensures that the influencer's message resonates with their audience, establishing a genuine connection with the brand. As the social media scene in Nigeria undergoes continual changes, influencer marketing is poised to assume an increasingly pivotal role in brand strategies. Through meticulous influencer selection, the creation of compelling content and the diligent measurement of campaign performance, 
Nigerian brands can harness this potent tool to attain their marketing objectives and position themselves as front runners in their respective industries. That was Branding Focus. Next is Industry Conversation, where we have discussions with industry thought leaders who have distinguished themselves in the business of brand management and in the management of brand business. My guest today is a versatile and dynamic entrepreneur with many hats of leadership. Join me right after the break. Where is Glory? Excuse me, ma'am. Hello! Oh, where is Glow now? I don't hear you. Glow don't go village, tell all our customer. Abby. Everybody pay attention. See, now Glow barricaded 10x. Now he might they take tension, my customers. Now he they dash me 10 times the credits when I load. Why even summon me double data join? Yeah, yeah. Wait, so, so with one fire when they give on the bus, so you they enjoy up to 15,000 naira credit and data. And I say I never finish you. See, when I say we enjoy, if we not join Glow barricaded 10x, when I go get 1,000 naira welcome credit. Really? Glo, you don't win. When I see they here. <laughs> Hello, please. I'm looking for Glow. Please says now Glow be day five. Now Glow be day go. Okay, so enjoy ten times the value of your recharge on Glow Barricade 10X. You also get one thousand naira for calls and data and double data bonus on your subscription. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the bright idea. Welcome back to Industry Conversation. Today we'll be speaking with the Managing Director and Group Chief Executive Officer of Viden Zeal Communications Limited, Dr. Tsunji Olubodi. Glad to have you join us on the program, sir. Pleasure is entirely mine. All right, Thank great. You. Okay, so I, I know that you are a leader and industry icon, and I wanted to start today's interview with your assessment of the outcome here. Now tell us, what, uh, what is your assessment of the integrated marketing uh, communications and advertising space so far? Well, thank you. Um, obviously, 2023 was a very challenging year. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you look at the macroeconomics, it's, it's um, everything in itself. Um, look at the issue of the FX regime. Look at the issue of uh, government um, ability to meet up with their own um, with their own responsibilities, especially fiscal responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, look at the issue of security. Look at the issue of um, infrastructure. Um, all of these tended to make the cost of business significantly higher. Um, the unpredictability also impacted negatively with uh, a lot of the clients who in turn um, went into survival mode. Mm -hmm. Especially when you look at the issue of FX, the, the repercussion of that um, reverberated our, our, um, across several areas of concern. For instance, um, the supply chain. Um, they had long inventories that they could not meet up, uh, they could not um, get, get out of the pipeline. Um, the market itself became very restive uh, because, again, people were basically in survival mode, yes, again, because of the uh, very high inflation. It wasn't just a double digit inflation, they kept pricing from uh, quarter to quarter. Um, and, you know, all, all of that also germinated amongst um, uh, what you can call uh, political challenges because, again, there, there was no clarity in terms of the kind of leadership structure, political leadership structure, uh, that you could say, okay, all right, uh, yes, we do have challenges, but this is the direction to go, and this is what will take us to El Dorado. Um, there, there's just suspicion all over the place. So there's a lot of uncertainty. And when there's uncertainty, it makes planning very difficult. It makes projection very difficult. And of course, you do understand that in that kind of situation, the first thing that gets impacted is your advertising spend. So people are not likely to advertise when they can't even take, I mean, get rid of their inventory and when they have challenges with supply chain, with manufacturing and and so on and so forth. So um, we, we, we were the worst hit, I think, of, of many sectors. So when I say we, I mean the advertising and promotion and integrated marketing industry uh, was the worst hit. Um, but you see, the, the thing is also that whether we like it or not, um, all of that is happening um, in the midst of even global changes, you know, that we could not 
uh, wish away. So it makes it a lot more complex because not just an isolated thing in Nigeria, a lot of economics are challenged, uh, very slow growth, um, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, and even in some places in the West. I mean, even the UK and the, a host of others are going through different kind of challenges. Um, what all that also brings out is the fact that whatever happens in one small corner of the world seems to impact the rest of the world. So because now we play a much more global game than we mm -hmm. used to pay, play. So in some total, yes, we do have challenges in 2023. Um, what I think took us through is the resilience that we typically find um, in, in ourselves as Nigerians and the fact that we remain, we always remain very optimistic even when we are faced with the most um, dire challenges. Um, but, you know, coming out of 2023, I think it's clear that we are not likely to have a quick fix, a quick answer yeah. to those challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're still going to be here with us in 2024. Yeah. Um, how soon and how quickly we get out of it will be a combination of approaches. Uh, not least which will be the, the leadership that is provided by government and, of course, the faith that we also show in operating the, the economy. Okay, great. So you, you highlighted some of the challenges and you mentioned survival mode. And I remember that last year there were exits of some of giant brands. We had the likes of uh, GSK and PNB exiting Nigeria. Now, what would you say is the impact of this incessant uh, you know, exit from uh, the Nigerian uh, brand space? And what does this mean for consumers and other brands that are still in Nigeria? I think first is the need for us to be careful in, careful in terms of how we define such exits. Um, what you find in the case of GSK and the case of PNG is really that they took a corporate decision not just in Nigeria, not just in Africa, but in other parts of the world, um, modifying the way they do business. All right. Um, and part, I, I guess that part of the reason for that is also that they're taking a the medium to long-term view of how uh, their businesses can perform better. Uh, more and more people are realizing um, the just-in-time approach to manufacturing, mm -hmm. that when you you know, where you do manufacturing and you have huge warehouses and you have long um, standard operating processes that tend to make your product either more expensive mm -hmm. or delays its uh, getting to the end market, then it has its own implications. My sense is that that's the reason why GSK and, um, and PNG, for instance, went the way of um, focusing more on retail and changing their distributive network, you know, um, because they need to remain very competitive in the markets where they operate. Uh, but coincidentally, in an environment like ours, and that happening, people automatically make the allusion to the fact that, oh, it's because of the challenges in the economy is the reason why they are living. Um, that may be true, but only true to some extent. I thought to provide some kind of clarity on that. Um, my second view about this is also that things have become a lot more dynamic. Um, take the issue of migration, for instance. The kind of migration we have today is different from the kind of migration you had in the 60s and early 70s, where, for instance, people move because they want to have better knowledge. Uh, they want to improve on their education. Mm -hmm. So they go to the West to study, and then they move back. The kind of migration you have today, again, goes back to survival migration mm -hmm. or to what I call instinctive migration. Uh, survival migration is um, that that compels people to move from one point to the other because of safety, because they want a better life, uh, because they want better opportunities for themselves, for their family, for their children. So they will do anything it takes to be able to move from that point A to point B. Again, uh, the general notion is that people move from Africa and challenged uh, third world countries to, um, to places in the West. That might be so, but people have also been known to move from areas, even within countries, even within nation states, mm -hmm. to places where they can find better security. Now, the implication of this by extension is that it's made things a lot more dynamic in the sense of 
um, the lifestyle choices that people make, um, the way people assess what they pay for and how they pay for it, you know, in terms of products, goods, and services, um, the way they consider, the way they consume information, for instance, through um, uh, media and so on and so forth. What I'm trying to bring out of this is the fact that because things have become very dynamic, things are very, very fluid, what you find is that the options that tend to meet um, the need states of people have also, have also become very, very fluid. So that impacts the way people take decisions mm -hmm. and to that extent what they pay for, what they pay for in goods and services. So again, what it speaks to is the fact that as manufacturers, you must always be able to put, your, put a gauge on the mood and mindset of the market. Because if you don't, then you'll be working at variance. So in a situation where you have very high inflation, in a situation where you have a very limited purchasing power, in a situation where there's insecurity and you cannot honestly guarantee what's going to happen a few weeks down the line, people have tend to live more, if you like, from day to day. You know, they just take each day as it comes, as it comes. and they want to make the best of each day. Mm -hmm. So what that presupposes is that the notion of luxury is, re is reduced, maybe significantly. And because it's survival mode, they would then look at the hierarchy of needs and say, what are the most important things for me that I need? So it would be food, shelter, you know, clothing, obviously, uh, maybe uh, not necessarily in that order, but this would be the key considerations. And what am I willing to pay for these things in exchange for the, the comfort or the need that I, uh, I require? and what I can afford to, to, to offer. So if I take it back to the issue of things like, I mean, companies like PNG and um, GSK, then you start to understand that alternative brands are gaining ground because what used to be dominant brands that spoke or speak to the taste of people at a certain level is no longer relevant. Not when you are in transition mode, when, not when you are in constant motion, not when you are very fluid in terms of, okay, what will tomorrow bring? Mm. I, I hope you're getting what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. those things means that brands that used to have the comfort of a certain high ground are no longer comfortable. You can no longer sit idle because they will constantly be challenged by value for discount brands. Now, I don't want to say cheaper. Uh, brands that meet the need states of people where they are, brands that speak to their cultural identity. So if you go back to the issue of migration that I spoke about, for instance, I imagine that in most places in the West, and that happens a lot, even when I travel, the first thing I'm looking for is, where can I get Nigerian food? Oh, so in places where you did, not, you did not have a high concentration of Nigerians before, that might be difficult to come by. But I like to wager that in many places all around the globe now that you have a lot of Nigerians where they migrated to, Nigerian food has become you know, available. available. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that from the perspective of opportunity and from the perspective of the kind of change and dynamism that's come into play, you then still need to start understanding why migration has become an integral part of what we experience today and something that has become inevitable as part of the dynamic, as part of the um, vehicles that bring the change. Part of what migration also brings to the fore is the fact that uh, culture will become a lot more diluted and mixed. Um, lifestyle will become you know, a lot more pronounced. And that's why you then find this renaissance happening all over the place where it's first generation, second generation, or third generation Nigerians, wherever they are. People will speak to the identity that that um, that demonstrates the originality in their culture. So there's a lot of spin-offs that comes from all of these things. But I think for us as marketeers and as marketing organizations, um, whether on the client side or it's really for us to remain very very uh, adaptable, understanding the trends as they change, monitoring it, and looking for the opportunities that continue to emerge on on a daily basis. Okay, great. So uh, uh, you almost answered my, my next question. So you, you highlighted some of the challenges that um, 
marketeers and brands and organizations faced last year. And you mentioned resilience as some of the things that helped uh, pull through last year. Now, what are the strategic moves you think brands and both on the client side or, you know, on the brand side, what are the strategic moves they can make to ensure that in 2024, they move from survival to being significant or, you know, you know, sort of stay afloat and be buoyant? Well, I mean, the first thing is how do you gain critical mass? I think that should always be the question. So in, in gaining critical mass, it means that you have to follow the money. Mm -hmm. Following the money means that you have to go to where money is spent. <laughs> Going to where money is spent means that you have to know where and how people congregate. Okay. Knowing where how people congregate means that you have to understand the mindset and the mentality that makes them to congregate because they need connectivity, they need communication, they need community. So your task as a marketing person, as a marketer, will be to understand those evolving communities to understand the meaningful connections that they're creating and to understand how communication has become an essential part of how they need to interact. Um, I, I think if you do that, if you understand those things, then you'll be able to readapt your products, your services to, to those emerging needs. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the bright idea. And that's the much we can take on this week's episode of Marketing Edge on TV. Join us same time next week for the concluding part of our conversation with Dr. Tunji Olubodi. I am Olu Abukola Money. Bye for now. Every second, every minute, every hour, and every day, time doesn't just take away. It's a countdown to political decisions that shape our world. This country must move in. Imagine the impact these decisions have on our lives. Some are consequential, others may leave us intrigued or baffled. You will have no better friend and partner than Nigeria. Step in and feel the frenzy like never before. Join me every weekday for an hour of fact-finding interviews where questions caught to the core. What does Sinubu has that other 17 candidates do not have? I will dig in to get to the heart of issues, from local politics to global insight. Join me as I unearth the power plays, jaw-dropping revelations and the unfiltered truth. This isn't just politics, it's unraveling the stories that matter. Brace yourself for politics tonight, every weekday at 8 p.m., where every decision echoes along the corridors of our lives. Politics tonight, only on TVC News. From the valleys through the hills and river banks of Kogi State, we bring you updates on the developmental and economic activities of the Kogi State Government under the leadership of Governor Yahaya Adoza Belo on Confluence State today. From road construction to infrastructure, health and human capital development, we take you on a journey around the 21 local government areas of Kogi State on Confluence State today. Kogi State is moving forward. Our people are enjoying the true dividends of democracy. Confluence State today, showing at this time. Hello there, it's a brand new quarter and your favorite program, CAC Weekly, is about to unveil new innovations fresh from the Nigerian company registry. Have you heard of the extensible business reporting language standard for filing of electronic financial statements? Do you know that there's so much you can do on your own on the company's registration portal, CRP, from the comfort of your home or office? The CRP offers, amongst others, end-to-end -end electronic registration solution for accredited customers and the general public to initiate and complete pre-registration and post-registration applications electronically, online filing of annual return, online registration of limited liability partnership and limited partnership. See you there.